Exercise 12. On May 1, 2011, Bradley Enterprises issues bonds dated January 1, 2011 that have a $1,900,000 par value, mature in 20 years, and pay 10% interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. The bonds are sold at par, plus four months accrued interest. How much accrued interest do the bond purchasers pay Bradley on May 1, 2011? The amount accrued is the par value $1,900,000 multiplied by 10%, multiplied by 4 twelfths, $63,333. Requirement 2 asks us to prepare journal entries to record the issuance of the bonds on May 1, 2011. On May 1, Bradley receives $1,963,333, the par value plus the four months accrued interest. Credit interest payable for $63,333, and credit bonds payable for the $1,900,000. The reason we're using interest payable is because the accrued interest is held temporarily by Bradley and used to fund four-sixths of the first interest payment. The journal entry for the first interest payment shows the debit to interest expense, 31667 debit interest payable, 63333 and a credit to cash for 95000 the credit to cash, the $95,000, is the $1,900,000 par value multiplied by 10% interest, the contract rate, and divided by 2. This represents 6 months worth of interest. Interest expense is 2 months worth of interest because Bradley only had the use of the money between May 1st, the issue date, and June 30th, the first interest payment date. If we take $1,900,000, the par value, multiply it by 10% and multiply it by 2 twelfths, interest expense is 31667 Interest payable was the $1,900,000 multiplied by 10% multiplied by 4 twelfths. So the bond purchaser gave us four months worth of interest and we repaid it right away. The journal entry to record the second interest payment on December 31, 2011 is a debit to interest expense, 95000 and a credit to cash.